Hi everyone, John here. Welcome back to another Topo Talk. It's been a few weeks, but I'm back and I think I've got a reasonable example for you. I've been working on this Starship Troopers helmet in my spare time. And what I want to specifically focus on today is this topology here. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but I thought it'd be a great opportunity just to very quickly walk you through the workflow that I've used. And that's the shrink wrap workflow. So why don't I just turn that off and turn on my backup. Okay, and I'll turn on the helmet target. I'll just turn this one off. All right, so I got a 3D helmet and there's a side and a front view. And as you can see, I'm using a really big low poly. This was a quad sphere to start with, just to get the basic shape. And if I just select that and just turn on my sub D surface, you can see I've got that hugging that shape really nicely. And it's really easy to manipulate something this low poly. You see with the subdivision surface um, for on cage turned on, I can quickly, you know, just move things around and just get that shape looking really good. And then once I've got that shape established and it's got really beautiful smoothness under subdivision, that becomes the target object for the shrink wrap modifier. And that way when I start changing the topology and getting the correct edge flow at a higher poly count, I'm still going to be able to keep a really nice, smooth, even shape that matches the shape of the guide image. So let me just turn on one of those. There we go. So that's shrink wrapped onto that shape, onto that target. And you can see that's slightly higher poly count now. And you can see I've started to cut in the geometry to match the flow of the guide image. But as you can also see, this is this topology is all wrong. We've got these strips here. And you, maybe you could put these in with textures, but I wanted to actually cut these into the geometry. And also here, these aren't so bad. You've got a fair amount of geometry there that could hold this in place, but probably not quite enough. And that means that we have to increase the poly count. So how do we do that? Well, we subdivide. So if we just turn this one off and turn this one on, here's a version that I've subdivided to a level of one. And at this subdivision level, I was able to cut in this detail successfully. You can see I've changed the edge flow there. You just view that on the guide image. You can see that sits directly over those slots. And also these ones here as well. There's enough geometry in there to hold that in place. And let's just turn that off again and turn this one back on. And this one's been subdivided once more. And I had to subdivide it once more because I needed even more geometry in order to be able to hold these slots in place as well. I probably should have used a um, vertex crease on the corners there when I subdivided that. I forgot to do that. but um. I can slide that actually quite easily back into place. Because I'm under shrink wrap, I can just slide that back into place, you know, or maybe um, you know, select a bunch of edges and just use something like, let's see, uh, Loop Tools G Stretch, just to straighten that out. You know, just move that back into position and just manipulate this to get it back into shape. I'll fine tune this a little bit later. But because it's under a shrink wrap modifier, I'm not going to mess up that shape. You can see it's still perfectly smooth because it's under that shrink wrap. Obviously, I have to apply the shrink wrap, um, and I've already applied it a few times as I started adding more detail, but I'll have to apply that at the end just to lock in you know, all of that perfectly smooth geometry. <clears throat> but you can see how I can, I can manipulate details, add more details, and still keep it super smooth because it's being shrink wrapped onto that target. Now, the reason I'm able to still shrink wrap and have insets in this, extrusions, is because I'm using a vertex group. So let's just come back to edit mode. And I'll just select that vertex group. Aha. Uh -huh. See, I've selected, 
I've done the extrusions and I've selected all of the faces that I still need to shrink wrap because I want these to be beautifully smooth as I'm manipulating, as I said, as I'm manipulating this geometry. So because I can use a vertex group with my shrink wrap modifier, you can see here I've chosen that group as my vertex group. It's only affecting those. If I didn't use that vertex group, it would flatten everything out like that. So those um, vertex groups with shrink wrap modifiers are super handy. I can manipulate this right up to the very end and still know that I'm not going to mess up those normals and add lumps and bumps to it. You can see, even with that amount of detail, it's still nice and smooth, which is great. So, so that's what I did up to this point. Let's come and have a look at this geometry here now. Now, if we turn on the subdivision surface modifier, take a look at these corners on these ones, and then look at these corners on these ones. Ah, so I've added in the control loops to sharpen these corners, but you can see these ones haven't been added in. You can see how that's rounding those out. So if we just come back to there. So even with those extra details and those extra cuts, we're not messing up that nice smooth area. But, and I need to go in now and just finish this off. So I thought we could have a look at how I cut those in. Let's just hide that for a sec. Just looking at this, you can see I've added the extra geometry by uh, applying a subdivision surface modifier. And then I've gone in and I've, you know, cut out these, these little strips. These are the ones from the front of the um, helmet, these little vents. And I've just used a little sort of looping strategy here just to be able to put this detail in and not have to add, you know, all the extra geometry to the rest of the model or, or, or propagate these loops all the way through, you know, not take this loop here, you know, and cut it all the way through. I've just done a little looping strategy there. But now I have to actually cut in even more detail. So we have to kind of use even more looping to do that. So let's take a look at how I do that. I'm going to grab the knife. And in order to do this, I'm going to have to come in and add in an extra loop. So I'm going to cut in here and add a little corner there. And I'm going to come in here add a corner there, and then cut this one right down the middle, like that. Now I'm going to join that one to that one, and let's do the same on the other side. So I'll come up here, and we'll come around, and around. We're cutting that through. I'm using the right mouse button just to um, be able to continue the cut at another different area and then just left mouse button continue that okay so there we go and we want to join that one to that one it is going to give us a big pole there but shouldn't be a problem and join this one to this one now I could keep going with that but let's just use that for now so I'll hit the space bar so that's the start of that so now we give that gives us enough sort of extra structure in order to be able to hold these other cuts that we're going to make in place. So what I'll do now is add these new cuts in just to hold these corners nice and tight. And in a second, we're going to dissolve some stuff. So bring that one in there, another one in there, and right mouse button. And where are we now? So we've got to go, let's see, here, and here, and there, and there, and also here, and here. Looks complicated, doesn't it? And there and there. So it's holding this all in place. This is under a mirror modifier. I don't have to do quite as much work. Okay, so now we've got those in place. Now we've got to dissolve a few. So we've got to get that one and that one, that one and that one, that one, that one, and that one and that one, and these two. 
Control X. All right. So that's actually all we need to do. That's all quads now. And I need to sort of, you know, even these out a little bit. So now if I just uh, control R, you can see how I can get a loop around there. So the edge flow is still pretty good. But if I just press tab and we view that under subdivision, or oh, we've missed one there, look, I've got to cut that in two. So that's why it's always good to view it under subdivision. Got to bring one there and there. And just be careful when you're doing this and you're cutting through because you might be cutting through to the other side of the model. Sometimes if that happens, I just go on the inside and do it on the inside. There we go. Right. We've got that there. And now we've got those nice and sharp. Sharp enough. Now you, can, you will see, see a bit of a bump there. Look at that. Let's go back and look at our vertex group. Uh huh. See, because we've added extra detail, that's no longer part of the vertex group. So we'll just quickly add that back in by selecting it. And grab that. And I think I can just assign. Yeah. Let's click assign again and tab. And check that out. It's a little tiny bit there, but it's so much better. And then all I have to do is just, you know, do exactly the same on the other side. I won't do that now, but you can see I've done that there as well. Now I want to relax that a little bit. Now I've shown in multiple tutorials how you can use the slide relax tool in sculpting to do that. I'm going to use a little add-on that I use called Volume Preserve Smoothing, the Volume Smooth tool. And I'm just going to select some of these. Like that, maybe these ones as well. And I'm just going to just loosen these up a little bit, just relax them a little bit. So if I just click and drag now so I can do effectively what the slide relax tool does in sculpting mode but I can do it directly in the edit um, window in, in edit mode and you can see I, I do have a pole there a couple of poles come back to tweak there's a pole there you know it's a complex pole um, I could add an extra loop you know, I could bevel that to add two loops and separate that so it wouldn't be a complex pole, but that would mean adding another loop all the way down my geometry, which I'd have to sort of spread out, and it could mess up this area as well. But let's have a look and see how that looks. Um, let's choose a matte cap. I mean, that's pretty good. Look at that. Even with all that de extra detail cut in, I have to say that's pretty good. So. Once I finish that little bit of detail there, I'll be ready to move on to the next stage with this. But um, hopefully you found that helpful. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I will see you in another Topo Talk. Bye for now.